Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Restituto, and I'm a musician from Northport, New York. And today, I have the absolute pleasure of having Liz Abramson here from Sterling Sound. We're going to have a really interesting conversation about the music industry and just, just different jobs inside of the music industry. And we're going to be hearing her story working with Sterling Sound. The reason that might sound familiar is because we had Chris Geringer from Sterling Sound also on the channel a couple weeks back. Uh, and that's actually how she and I met. She uh, she kind of facilitated that opportunity. So, um. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the channel. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. Yeah. So uh, can you give a little bit of a backstory on who you are, what you do, and then we'll go into kind of like just the different opportunities in the music industry. And like I mentioned before we started this actual live, um, part of the goal for these interviews is, is I want to just open people's horizons that, you know, they say I want to work in the music industry, but maybe they don't have the talent of music. Um, but from what I've seen from your Instagram, I mean, I, I've been following you since we met. Um, you love, you're such a music lover. And I love, I love yeah. how much you love music, you know, and like, that's what I appreciate. So uh, let's, let's get a little backstory. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the quick backstory is I am from Burlington, Iowa, like a smaller town in the Midwest. Um, I grew up playing the viola, actually. So I played the viola for like 10 years, was in like symphony and everything and played the flute for a few years, but stuck with the viola longer. Um, was I you know was kind of told in high school that like upon like applying for colleges and you know they make you choose your major right away. This was what two thousand eight, um, and it was like the mentality that you have to choose your major right away and you have to figure out what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And uh, yeah. um, it, I was like, oh, I mean, I I love I love music. I want to do music, but like everyone was just saying like, well, you're probably just gonna have to teach. Like you're just gonna be a music teacher. You're gonna teach violin, you're gonna teach whatever. And I was like, well, is there anything else? And at mm. the time it was like, it didn't seem like there was anything else in that path. So I chose um, design. I chose like graphic design, got an art degree at Iowa, graduated from Iowa, um, bounced around for a little bit, landed in New York, um, still doing design work and you know, bartending. I was a bartender for 10 years just, you know, with for extra money and everything. And that's kind of how I met Chris. Um, was that too quick of a pull through of the No, thing? no, that's that's yeah. totally so so just backtracking a little bit, you you love yeah. you've always loved music, uh, yeah. but you didn't really want to teach. Yeah, uh, I was like a concert junkie. So like I love yeah. like going to shows and like, yeah, just live music, anything to do with that. Like I, I kept with even though I didn't play the viola in college, I kept with like live music and tried to get involved in that and yeah but um, so that's really cool because there's so many people on that that watch this channel that like just love music you know they might yeah. not play an instrument and even if they do they just might not want to teach it or you know they don't know if they want to really perform you know yeah but, like, that's really cool so now you're bartending or you were bartending in new york city and you met chris bartending or yeah had, really yeah he, just exactly. walked in? Yeah, so no. he, he was one of my um so he lived across the street from i worked i used to work at this little um like a speakeasy sort of in east village cool um, and so Chris at the time, this was when the studio, when Sterling was in Chelsea in lower Manhattan. Um, so he lived across the street from the bar that I worked at and he would come in all the time. We'd chat or whatever. And it was a smaller bar. So I was the only bartender on, which meant that I had full control over the music. <laughs> nice. And <laughs> so I was always playing my own stuff. And like, I think I played like a few like Bleacher songs or something and something else by Lord or Harry Styles or whatever. And he just, he just kept saying like, I, I mastered this song and I was like, I don't know what that means, but like, cool. Uh, and then he, I, he sort of explained to me, like at one point he like got my attention was like, you're play he's like, what playlist is this? You're always playing really great music, all this stuff. And it was a huge compliment once I found out who he was. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he was like, <laughs> but as I'm like working and trying to retain information, all I, like he was, I remember him saying things like, do you work in the industry? And I was like, no, I work at an architecture firm. I'm a graphic mm. designer. It's whatever. It's boring. Um, and he was like, well, you could, you know, like whatever. And I was like, well, no, I don't really have a degree in music or, you know, that ship sailed, mm. uh, was my, my thinking. And then I remember going home one night after like bartending and just being like, maybe I could. Mm. And so I got online and I searched, I remember him telling me that he worked on Harry Styles record. And so I Googled, um, Harry Styles, engineer, sound engineer, and I found Sterling's website. I found the picture of the bald guy, and I clicked on his name, and I was like, "I we don't give out our engineer's email addresses, so I found his name and took it to Facebook and found him on Facebook. 
and went full stalker and wrote him like this nice little message. It was like, Hey, it's your, you know, local bartender. Would you, <laughs> um, would you come in and grab a beer and tell me more about this? Um, how I, someone like me could work in the music industry. And it was like, I love that. Yeah, it was a full, I mean, he's sometimes he'll screenshot and send me the message and it's so cringy. I'm just like, <laughs> how yep, long ago I, was that? Uh, that was probably like four years ago. Okay. Yeah. At least four, four or five years ago when I just moved to New York. Um, so, but yeah, we became friends and he like got me connected with a couple other people in the industry, got me a couple lunches, um, got me into like when Sterling hosted a Grammy party, when the Grammys were in New York one year, um, just sort of, we kept in touch and like, he was super cool. He would always come into the bar, <clears throat> excuse me, the bar while I was working, um, and introduced me to whatever friends were in town, whatever, like to make any, like, I was literally just craving any connection mm. possible. So I was doing all my research and like trying to meet as many people as I could. And uh, simultaneously at the same time, I was living in Brooklyn with like four other people. Uh, you know, we're splitting bills. There's all sorts of, in a, in a house that big with four different people, just like, I just appointed myself house admin. And so there was one day I was sitting at the bar and Chris came in and I was like off, off duty or whatever, just sitting on my laptop, working on my little spreadsheet that I had for my roommates. And it was like, uh, you know, I would buy all the paper towels, toilet paper, I'd pay the bills, the electric bills and all these things. And like, I kept that all there. I kept each roommate in a column and made sure that they were paying me for each one. And he looks over at it and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I just doing my, my monthly bills. And he's like, does that say toilet paper? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I buy all the toilet paper, paper towels, dish soap, all that, you know, junk. And I charge my roommates like $7 and 80 cents a month so that we can just keep the Amazon subscriptions coming and nobody has to go to Dwayne Reed and it's like, you know, more cost efficient. And he was like, stop right there. You're a psychopath and I'm, I'm going to hire you when my manager quits. And I was like, okay, whatever that means, like, thanks. And then, you know, like a year later, I mean, his manager actually like quit and, um, or he left to do something else. And he, Chris called me and I was like, yep, absolutely. I'll, I'll be right there. Like, it was awesome. That's what a story. So one thing that actually <laughs> surprises me about this, because like, I mean, just, just I'm, I'm a lot of my knowledge is, you know, from the research I've done, but also really kind of just watching both of your Instagram stories. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you guys are pretty close, you know, friends now. Yeah. So I assumed kind of just ba based on the story that like, it was kind of this like snap, like, Oh, w work for me kind of thing. But it was, it seems like it was actually, you know, more of like a, a process, which kind of, I appreciate the, uh, not giving up kind of aspect of it yeah definitely i like we, i like made sure that i didn't lose contact with him and he yeah. like even you know um so like uh it was just it's just awesome like being able to like work with one of your like we're literally best friends like all, everybody here at sterling is really close yeah. which is awesome and um very few people here have been hired uh based on a resume that was submitted like mm. there are very few or like you know um yeah, I guess I, I could say that pretty confidently that most people, it's just like you, you make connections, you know, someone, you know, somebody, and then when a spot opens up, everybody's racking their brains and they're like, this person would be perfect. Let's call him. Let's do that. Let's pull this person in. Um, so like, I was one of those people that like, you know, Chris, uh, Chris has never even seen my resume, which like <laughs> kills me because I spent so much time on it, but it has nothing <laughs> to do with music. It's just like, I, yeah, it's, it's, it was all like graphic design work and stuff. And yeah. I just never thought like, I never thought that the skills, like by organizational skills and like mm. just being like a total, like neat and controlled, like person would get me somewhere like this and being able to work on projects that I love and you know, get yeah. it the end. Yeah. So let's go into a little bit of that. I think that that's so fascinating because like some times people like don't recognize all of the how things kind of work, how life works out. Right. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just <laughs> you know, you move from, you said Iowa, right? Mm -hmm. So you went from Iowa to New York City, the city of dreams, or a lot of people, yeah. city of broken dreams. But uh, <laughs> for a while, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, but you never know who you're gonna. And I think that's so important, also to to a testament a testament of like how people, you know, just need to be open to any relationship in the sense of like just be friends with everybody. And like, I I've, yeah. I've done probably about sixty of these interviews, and in every single, I'd say at least fifty five of them, s people say it's all about. You know, not necessarily talent because your talent was kind of somewhere else. You know, I mean, you had the talent yeah. of organizational skills and everything like that. But it's like 
it's all about who you know you know it's like being yeah. nice to everybody treating everybody nicely and and, and you know just making really like contacts is super important and obviously not that kind of con you weren't using chris you know but it no, was, yeah, it was you, just don't burn, you just don't burn your bridges exactly you okay. exactly so that's so now so now you, you get the job with them um and now you so you manage chris then yes so okay so I, can you I go managed, into that yeah i manage chris and i also manage will quinnell who's chris's production engineer um so will does he helps chris out with like you know, file setups, running alternates and like doing mm. bits and pieces here and there, um, sort of like a, like an assistant, uh, but Will also masters his own work. So he's mm -hmm. one of our other engineers here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we just brought on our intern. Um, her name is Gabby. She was our intern for like three years. Uh, same kind of story as me. Like she was a, a student at NYU and just sought out Chris. Like he came and taught, like he would do these like class classes things where he'd be like the guest speaker or whatever and i think she like sought him out and like wouldn't leave him alone until he gave her the internship and now we just like fell in love with her kept her around like uh promised her a job after graduation and cool. stuck to it so she's now training under chris and will to like do mastering work here and it's awesome that it's like is dream wild. Team. yeah so yeah. what what is your position look like like what does a yeah. day-to-day -day for you look like um, yeah, so basically, like, I, we have, like, the scheduling software, I, I get in every day, I have my emails all organized, I make sure I take care of, like, um, I take care of whatever's urgent, but I set their schedules for the day. So all three, and like, you know, mainly Chris and Will's right now. So um, I make sure that Chris has everything, like, I check with Will and Gabby to make sure Chris has all the files he needs to master for that day, uh, make sure that everything's getting paid, make sure that, you know, whatever went out the door yesterday is okay. Like, um, but yeah, mainly just setting Chris's schedule, making sure that he has everything he needs to work and then chasing the clients for everything that has not been uploaded to us, which is- So that's actually yeah. pretty wild. So now you're it the person- very quickly. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So you're the person then that like, you know, if Dua Lipa is getting something mastered from you guys, you know, you and they're, they're missing a file, you would- I assume not Dua Lipa, probably her management, right, or the producer of the track. But like, mm -hmm. you, you're the per you're the person that goes and gets that track from them. Yep. Yeah. So, like, it, for example, like Dua Lipa. Um. So she's an artist that's signed to Warner UK, and so I contact. Her name is Grace over at Warner, and she and I like that project was awesome because it it ran really smoothly because her label is really easy like easy to work with. They just mm. email us. Josh Goodwin mixed most of it, and I and um. I would chase her she chases josh or i could sometimes we'll chase like the mixer directly and just say like hey guys you know we need the files depending on the time zone and stuff so you kind of have to be smart about that mm. depending on that is a nightmare oh my oh, yeah. gosh time yeah. zones for people that don't work internationally like even myself prior to working doing these interviews and stuff yeah. they are the worst it's, it's crazy i organize my inbox based on that basically mm. say so we have um sterling actually has um we have international coordinators so we have coordinators that work on projects in korea japan china you know you name it um so mostly those three though the like the ones over in asia like the ones that are asleep and we're awake like the ones on the yeah. 13 hour difference yeah. uh-oh uh, oh hold on you i lost I do every morning uh I lost oh. it for a hot sec. What was that? So yeah, you're frozen. Um, I was just saying I had them on like a special filter in my inbox, basically. So like I wake up every morning and I'm like, take care of you guys first because you're going to bed, and then uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Um, but it is yeah, it's a pain, but it's <laughs> it's awesome that we get the work. We I mean, Chris has done so many awesome like K-pop records or like BTS and yeah, he was uh, saying that. Blackpink and yeah. So we're really we're always excited to work with them. Yeah, so, that is really cool. Yeah. That is pretty. It's pretty amazing. Just it blows my mind. You know, just the steps in the music industry. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's so I think that so many people, including myself, very often don't recognize the, the steps th that of people that are in between. You know. Oh yeah. You know, I write a song and then I go and record that song. Okay, so then to, now I don't per have a manager at the moment, but like it, a bigger artist. Um, I would take my song to the manager who the manager would then book the song at a studio who then would have three different mixers, the engineer who sets up, you know, and then that the that, recording, that, you know, the oh mixing, the mastering, gosh. and it's not always the same person. And sometimes maybe they want to hear something different. We'll do, we'll, we'll book things like two, two different engineers here could be working on the same song. 
because the client might want to hear them both. And so it's called, we call it kind mm-hmm. of a shootout mm-hmm. where they book with, they'll book with like Randy Merrill and Chris and they'll mm-hmm. pick one or the other, or sometimes they don't even tell us and the song gets on Spotify and we're like, whose master was it? <laughs> like, which one was it? That's so that's wild. always, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Cause there's, I, there could be, you know, it could just be you, 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 the artist could book with me. You could mix your own song and book with me and Chris. And that's like a one, two, three, or there could be like, I mean, again, like Dua, for example, has, she has a team of writers and like, mm-hmm. so the writers have to like all kind of collaborate. And I'm, I'm personally fascinated by like that end of things. Mm-hmm. There's so much more that happens than just by the time it's brought to mastering, they've gone through clearance to make sure that it doesn't sound like another song. They've oh gone through gosh, like, yeah. Yeah, clearance to make sure none of the lyrics match something else. You know, like there's lawyers involved and there's people at the label that are in charge of, you know, sometimes songs will get all the way to the mixing process and then never see the light of day because they get shut down by like X, Y, and Z. And it's just fascinating. It's incredible. It it really is. I love peeling back the onion of the layers of the music industry. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then by the time it gets to Sterling, you know, it's like, go, 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 go. Sure. How how close are you guys to the actual release date typically? Uh, anywhere anywhere from the closest I've uh, I don't know anywhere from like a few days, which is where we're really like sweating and we've for major artists it. for like major label artists. Yeah, I've seen things like pop up on Spotify like four or five <laughs> days later, but I but I understand that like those, those are really special occasions and they must have something worked out because my understanding that it is that it's due like 12 days ahead or something okay um maybe a couple weeks like one or two weeks but um and there are other things that we'll work on and then like six months later it'll be released yeah. or something and i'm like well that was okay cool i forgot uh, yeah i completely yeah. forgotten because every day is different but um but yeah i don't know like there's somewhere they they'll just be real we'll just be sweating and it's just, it's always fun. And that's where like, and that's where being really organized comes in handy because like, I don't want to be the reason <laughs> that somebody, like, I don't want to be the one that gave Chris the wrong file name or gave him the wrong notes or like missed an email or missed something. And then like, all of a sudden, like they went with another engineer because like, I didn't get back to them fast enough or something, sure. you know, like there every, there's so many like different factors in it that can affect, you know. So the business structure of Sterling does then like Warner Brothers go to to Sterling and just hire Sterling or do they typically hire the specific engineer because you were saying you do some of these shootouts yeah Um, how does that work um so we're all under the same mastering house Sterling Sound um and they'll usually I mean each engineer's team is a different like billing team but it's all run by the same accountants the same people the same partners that are over so Chris is actually one of the partners as well at the studio. So, um, you know, he's uh, any, if they don't book with Chris, I want them to book with anybody else, like at Sterling. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, we're all team players. We're all like, we wanted to stay in house because everybody at Sterling is sort of on that team. Um, but yeah, so typically it will, like Warner will reach out to, if they want another engineer, they'll reach out to their manager or they'll reach out to one of us and say like, can you connect me with whoever, you know, manages Joe Laporta or Randy Merrill or Greg Calby? And yeah, so um, it's pretty much, it's not like, it doesn't get super competitive, but it is fun to like keep it all in house, whatever, sure, whatever, of course. whoever comes to us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We're never, yeah. Absolutely. But it is sound. So in being this, in, in being managing for an art, so te- te- technically you're, you're an artist manager, I guess would be a, a good way to say it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, because your, your your LinkedIn profile, I think, says project manager, I think. God, I haven't looked at my LinkedIn. <laughs> well, I was trying to find a good photo. I think I updated it a little when I was at Sterling, because I just kept getting, like, inquiries for, like, design work, and I was like, ah, <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, um, so I, I, I was looking for a good, manager. yeah, oh, that's, yeah, I think it was, it was yeah, something so, along the lines of that. Um, yeah. Which kind of makes sense. It, you really are, but it's, it's a big, I think, a more of a broader spectrum than just project management. That's, I think, yeah. one of the tiers of your job. Um, but it, I, I love that because, so there's all these cool stories that you get, you're actually in the nitty gritty of the music industry. And for people that want to work maybe with music or have such an appreciate, cause there's so many people that just love music and would yeah. love to do something with it, you know, but necessarily, like we said, uh, you know, can't, can't, aren't going like, to be a superstar. Like, where do I fit? Where do I, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, mm-hmm. the music industry is so much bigger than people realize you know like there's so many different jobs whether it be managing an artist you know mm-hmm. and, you know, within like you know and and 
while Chris's name is tied to a, a million major label huge things, like he's not necessarily like known on the street, but you know he's still super relevant in the industry. It's just like people assume, oh, I, I, if I'm going to manage an artist, I have to manage you know Ed Sheeran, and it's like, well, yeah. You know, yeah, you can, Chris is yeah. probably no. Chris probably knows more people in the music industry than Ed Sheeran does at this point. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, like, yeah. And you just opening your your eyes to that kind of concept is is really, I think, important. You know, for yeah. a lot of people that want to work in the industry. Exactly. No, it's like a ne- it's like a, a network or like a web. Like there's Ed Sheeran. There's Ed Sheeran's manager. There's Ed Sheeran's agent. There's Ed Sheeran's PR agent. There's Ed Sheeran's accountant. There's like his accountant's manager. There's his yeah. other man. You're like, it's it it just it trickles down to like you know um everybody has like an assistant or like you know like we have accounting people who you know everybody and everybody here honestly like loves music too which is cool Mm -hmm. like everybody here is you know we're huge fans of like almost every like a lot of people that we work with and um that is always fun to see um and conversations that happen here just like are fulfilling and really fun as opposed to sort of like some of the drier environments I've been in uh, in the workplace where you're like what did you do this weekend yeah I mean yeah that's, that sounds great uh, yeah exactly like yeah I went to this concert and like the lights and they did this and they pulled this guy on stage and they did you know it's like and everybody's like interested to like talk about music and it doesn't yeah. ever get boring so so now how, how involved are you in the process like when they bring an artist in so Chris was saying that when sometimes when an artist uh, sometimes they'll actually come to the studio and like be mm-hmm. really hyper involved. Like, do you get to meet these artists? Do you get to hang around there? Are you kind of in a different room or how does that typically work? I like, yeah, I, we managers pretty much like we get everything set up, make sure they have what they need. Sometimes we'll have artists send like a writer. It's very <laughs> rare, but like, it, it's like, you know, um, we'll get everything set up and then make sure that, you know, we order food for the day and, and make sure that they're happy and they've got what they need and their entourage is happy and their entourage it's get them all get them what all a set. world what a world people bring in like you know like security and stuff and i'm just i just will go upstairs make sure the receptionist is good she'll make them coffee do whatever and then i run back downstairs and just kind of like get back to work and like i don't like to you know i've never been like that though either i'm always just afraid of, of famous people <laughs> <laughs> like oh that's just it's just lady gaga hanging out in our parking lot and i'm just like Oh my god! I run back downstairs where I'm just like hiding because I don't want to overwhelm anybody. I want everyone to have like a nice like, you know, sure, of course, a Absolutely. nice time. Absolutely, like they're here for the engineer. It's not. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah. Well, but they're only here because of you. It's true. Yeah. Sometimes Chris <laughs> will like call me upstairs to say hi and like do whatever. It's you know it, we'll like do like a little meet and greet. But it's um yeah we've we've had some really cool people come in and um you know looking forward to more booking more bigger like sessions like that coming in and stuff now that. COVID's been Mm -hmm. sort of tamed, but yeah. Yeah. So being, being in your position and and, and in contact with a lot of these management stuff, are there any opportunities that you have seen from yourself in working in this that you like wouldn't have expected or thought, well, you know, wow, this is really, this is really cool. Or, you know, just because I encouraging people of like some of the cool things that can happen in the music industry. Yeah. So, I mean, like upon hiring me, Chris like made a comment and he said something, he's like, He's like, stick with me for, you know, X amount of years. And he's like, I'll connect you with whoever you want. Like, he's like, you can move laterally. You can like, move, to, like go to a label. You can work here or there, whatever. And like, we'll get you like work. For, he's basically, yeah, it was just like work for me for however many years. And like, I'll connect you with whoever. I'm like, now that I've been here, I've been here for three years. I'm like, I don't want to work anywhere else. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. This is great. I love my job. So like, yeah. I don't see, yeah. Right now I'm just like, I found a good spot where I really like it. But if I like. But if I had to, I mean, like, I I can see opportunities in like artist management, and I can mm-hmm. see like I I've made enough friends um, in the industry, people that I really like actually would more people that I would just enjoy like working with and being around and having creative opportunities to you know, mm-hmm. and it's just it seems almost endless at this point, which is great because at first it seemed like there was no um, opportunity at all. So Absolutely. besides like teaching and performing, and it's yes. Just, yeah, that's a that's actually amazing, you know. So so maybe it, can you list maybe like a couple handful of opportunities in the sense of like you know just different jobs that you've even seen out there that you know mm-hmm. people related to the music industry can get. Yeah, and I I mean like, and again like I don't know without having like I didn't know mine was an opportunity like sure. I, I manage an engineer or like exactly. you can, um, different jobs within a label like they have accountants that 
probably have no music on their resume. It's just account. I mean, you maybe you're, you work in accounting or you do um, IT work. Uh, there's, I mean, IT is super important because we're trying to keep everything safe and secure. Sure. We're trying yeah. not to let anyone's masters leave. Oh so God. we have our own, like, yeah, we have our own custom. That's a whole other thing. Maybe you'll interview our IT guy. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> um, I'm sure they have some wild stories. Oh my gosh, yes. There's, <clears throat> that's I mean, crazy, that, actually. Yeah, like that you can do, I mean, like, there's a and r which is um a huge like realm of jobs that i still can't wrap my head around but basically yeah. you're making sure that the artist gets what they want and that they're happy and that they you know the whole process of the project management of creating an album or a single or whatever goes smoothly mm. and there's a and r assistants then there's a and r admin who are, you know this million tiers of a and r at a label there's people that have worked their way up to like presidents and vice presidents of you know I, and that's like the label side's completely, not completely foreign to me, but like something that I just didn't, we, there's labels and studios and it's sort of like, you know, I, sure. from, from the bar industry, I see it as like the bartenders and like the cocktail waitresses who are like, they're client facing, they're more or less client facing and they're making sure like you're happy with your meal and you're getting what you want and whatever. And the bartenders are back there just sweating and shaking drinks as fast as they can and getting everything out. <laughs> and I assume that you guys are the bartenders in this situation. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. That is funny. That is funny. So yeah. how, in your experience, how have you seen the music industry works a little differently than you expected? I mean, yeah, like it's, it's not like, when you watch the movies and then, I mean, uh, a great example is, uh, I don't know if anyone watches like uh, Dave on Hulu. Have you seen that show? I haven't, no, but I, I know what you It's Lil Dicky and yeah. like Benny Blanco and stuff. And he's, he kind of gives a really good, he portray, he portrays it really well, I think, um, just as far as like. Is that a fiction or is that reality kind of stuff? I think some of it was based on reality, from what I've been told. Some okay. of it, I think, was based on some some real happening that I don't want to, I don't know, but, um, just watch <laughs> okay. it. It's really good. But yeah, I gotta it's, check like a, it out. it's, it's really funny, but it's also like, it's he, he himself, the artist goes through the process of like writing and going into the studio of recording, not liking what he's recorded. And like, mm. then he also has the pressure from the label of like a deadline and all this stuff. And I think in the movies, what you mo mainly see is just like someone gets signed to a label and then like the album comes out mm -hmm. and you're like, what, or they're in the studio and it's like a giant mixing board and there's like, you know, a bunch of people and there's champagne and there's all these things. And it's like, I think realistically, I don't, I can't speak for the recording side, but like realistically, like it takes a lot more work than just like, you can't just record it and put it out. Like uh, it'll be recorded. Like we'll, we'll get wind of it when it's like, sometimes we'll, we'll get wind of it after the mix has been approved but yeah. in order for that to happen you have to write it record it record all the different stems of it and then have somebody mix it put it all together and then send that back get it approved it's not approved they mix it again mix it again mix version nine or ten and then um maybe like they finally get word from somebody that they're like oh well we can't use this because that's a biggie lyric so we have to take that out and it's like they have to go back to the mixing process <laughs> so like i can only imagine how like stressful it is on that end and then just uh, to get it all the way to the wild. point where it's approved for approved for mastering and then we get it and then they're like wait a minute it's not approved we got to go to the oh mix and do some God. or like it gets to us and like there's something in it that they may may not hear until chris has mastered it and it gets sure. back to them and then they hear something else and then we just go back again and do it yeah. so it's like it's it's a whole like this and then it's like yeah, and then we send it to spotify or we don't but they you know the label does or whoever else but it's like in order to get there it's it takes so a many, team and so then, many know. people yeah it's absurd it's crazy yeah. so what would you looking back now that you've worked with chris for a couple of years you've known him for even longer um and working in the industry and even maybe prior to the industry what's something that you would tell yourself like uh your younger <laughs> self looking back um i mean mainly not to like worry so much that i have to be pigeonholed into something like mm. You know, I mean, like what I was told was that, you know, you play the viola, you're going to perform in a city like, in an orchestra and it's going to be super boring and you're going to do this and that. And it's like, there's no way, like, unless you like find a folk band and like go on the road with them, you, that like, it just wasn't, there were things in my, when I was like 18 that I was like, oh, like that could never happen for me because like, whatever, I would just go back and be like, no, like do some research, 
and like get out there and figure it out before yeah. you give up like don't just like say like well no that's not possible because clearly like could be possible absolutely but yeah well, I, I would say based on your stories of hanging out with lady gaga in the parking lot things have definitely worked out <laughs> <laughs> hiding from lady gaga while yeah. she's in the parking lot <laughs> oh man exactly, yeah. so it, 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 wrapping it up because i want i want to mm. be respectful of your time and everything um what are some tips that you would personally give you know i mean we've covered a couple of them but if you had some specific like maybe more nitty-gritty tips of people that kind of want to get in the industry but may, might not want to be the musician themselves yeah i mean like the cold calling sometimes works and like and don't give up mm. like our intern for like she's not an intern anymore she's an employee now she's a sterling sound engineer Gabby, she just, I mean, she didn't give up either. So she like kept pinging Chris until he gave her a shot. So like just doing that and I'll, I'll always be like really happy that I did like search Harry Styles, sound engineer, find him on the website, find his name yeah. like that. Doing that, yeah. like doing, doing your detective work, it, it pays off, honestly. Like yeah. it's, it's really good to like um dig always dig deeper always there's always like another layer you're always going to find somebody's manager or somebody's you know and like pick up things here and there and don't lose context don't burn your bridges like because it mm -hmm. it helps <laughs> yeah. absolutely and i think an important thing to that is always trying to add as much value as you can to that person so i'm sure i'm assuming gabby wasn't just like hey give me a job give me a job she's mm -mm, probably no. hey let me what can i do to help kind of thing you yeah know what i mean i mean she was awesome. She was like, I want to work at the best mastering house in the world. And like, you know, I mean, it, it, hey, it everybody loves honestly. flattery, too, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, she was awesome. She was just coming coming in with Christmas gifts every time, like wow, remembering cool. everyone's birthdays. That's like, cool. She was really, yeah, she's sharp. That's so cool. like, yeah, being on top of it, being sharp, just like making sure. Yeah. And being grateful and humble. And like I every day, I'm just like there are days when I'm just like, oh, my God, Chris, thank you so much. <laughs> For, I'm so much happier here than I was like at any other job. So mm -hmm. I'm just, yeah, finding a place and then just doing everything you can to stay there. So, yeah, for real. See, I love that because like I was, I, it, so many people hate their jobs and it drives me insane. Like I was just thinking like my wife and I away, like are going away for a couple of days to visit family mm -hmm. and like, don't get me wrong. I'm excited to get like see family, but like, I'm like, hmm. I don't want to miss work. I, I like what I do. Yeah. Like, people are like, oh, I can't wait until I go on vacation. I'm like, oh, yeah. like. I gotta go away for five days, like. <laughs> yeah, and like, what if something happens? What if something fun happens? Yeah, miss it? exactly. Like, yeah, FOMO yeah. is legit, man. <laughs> I had. That's so it's always it's nice to look forward to coming to work. Absolutely, especially with the people mm -hmm. that you you know you you get to work with and everything, it, it makes a big mm -hmm. difference as well. So yeah, exactly. So. I love that. Well, if you can hang out for a couple more seconds, I just want to say thank you personally, actually, Liz, for taking the time to come on the channel. And then I want to thank everybody else for watching. Hope you guys definitely, I think there were some really cool tidbits that she left in here that uh, I think just open can open people's perspective. I think that's one of the things I really want to do is just open people's perspective that, first of all, as a musician, you can make money in the music industry. It's just going to take a lot of work and a lot of time. And then even as a person that just admires music, if you want to work in the industry, there are so many different opportunities out there. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. God bless. Make sure you subscribe and go check out Liz's management work in the work that Chris has done. So anything that you see Chris is Chris releasing, you know, which is dude, I, I guess I just got to end with this. It's the craziest yeah. thing ever. I, I like watch Chris's stories religiously and uh, yours. Because yeah. I, like, to see the people you guys were, I'm like, oh, well, I like that song. I liked that song. I like that song. I'm like, yeah, of course Chris worked on it. Like everything I listen to is like, he's mastering. It's yeah. like, and, he, and he's lucky because he gets to hear it six months before, three weeks oh, before. Oh yeah, it's you know? just having the inside <laughs> scoop and having like worked on it forever. I mean, like Lil Nas X just put out Montero yeah. and my dad was like, hey, we really like the Lil, Lil, Nas, the Lil Nas X. I'm like, oh my God, dad. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Uh, my dad's it's like, can I tell him? He's like, can I tell my kids at school? My dad's a teacher in uh, high school. Great. He's like, can I tell the kids? Is it out yet? Can I tell the kids? Because sometimes I'll tell my parents. I'm like, but it's not like out. Don't you know? Don't say yeah. anything. But he'll be like, can I? Can I tell my kids about Lil Nas X? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> Coolest teacher ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. amazing.